Hello and welcome back to the Freelance Verse. I am finally back after five weeks. Well, I say finally, for me, it didn't feel at all like a long time. I can't imagine that five weeks there wasn't any videos. It went so quickly. Uh, but just I'm really glad that I took this break because considering what I've done in the last five weeks I was so extremely busy. I've done so many things around Europe and uh, I would have not been able to make videos So I'm very glad this was my summer break and now I'm back still completely in the middle of the heat wave as you can maybe see on my face It's really hot in here, but I'm trying my best to get through this video and get through the working days so I can go out and maybe do a little swimming or something. Anyways, coincidentally it is time for the next Q&A on the channel for the first video back and I think that's a good way to introduce season 3. Uh, there will be a lot of exciting content coming your way this season and for the first time this Q&A it's not only questions from YouTube but also from Instagram. Uh, if you haven't followed me yet on Instagram or Twitter you should do that. It's Freelanceverse on every platform and Anita who is who's doing my PR has been doing fantastic the, uh, the whole summer. She's been making very nice content and uh, she actually had the idea to also ask the question on Instagram if anyone has questions for the Q&A. So today I will first address the questions that I got in the last video and then also quickly look at Instagram and answer these uh, questions more quickly I think. Uh, yeah, so let's get right into it with question number one. The first question today comes from Yasmin. Uh, she asks, hi Adrian, I would like to ask you about a subtitling test. The recruiter reached out to me and required me to take an unpaid test. The first part is a translation test consisting of 60 subtitles and the second part is a proofreading test consisting of an approximate 350 word text. He asked me to determine a time to take the test and finish it within 4 hours. My question is, is it normal for a, recru for a recruiter to set a specific time for the translation to finish? For the translator to finish a test and what about the number of words and subtitles i have to translate and proofread thanks very much for the question there is a lot in there so first of all it is quite common for a for a recruiter to tell you a, a more or less the time frame in which you should finish the test usually they say please send it back in the next 24 48 hours or something just so they can make sure to get the test back within the next two days, right? If they really say you have only four hours to complete, that's, that can also happen. I've had this before. I, I, I talked about this on the channel before. I, I did a huge test for one of my biggest clients now, and that was capped at 10 hours. So I had 10 hours paid. Uh, to, to complete the test and it was made in a tool so they could actually track my time, right? Uh, if they don't track your time, they can't know if you spent four hours on it, right? And uh, they probably can't expect you to send the email back within four hours exactly. Uh, so unless they track the time, it's not really, uh, they can't prove how long you took. Um, but try to keep to the to the deadline if they if they give you one. Uh, the other thing is that it's far too long, right? It's it's free and 350 words for free is already very maximum, right? Uh, well, there shouldn't exist at all free tests besides that. But if you do a free test, then maybe 350 words is an absolute maximum to do. But then they also want you to do 60 subtitles, which can take a lot. It's also weird that they give you a number of subtitles like 60 subtitles what does that mean like that can be a video of one minute but that can be one of one hour like it depends so much on what is who's speaking what is the context and so 60 subtitles seems very fishy uh, so it's a bit weird I, I don't know about this test i wouldn't be feel comfortable to do this uh, but i understand if you feel like this has potential and you want to go through this test and yeah go ahead with it Next question is from Brigitta. It's funny, after asking this question, I actually met with her in Budapest and we had a nice chat over a coffee. She asks, my question would be about specializing. I have two degrees, one in psychology and one in research in cognif cognitive neuroscience. Unbelievable degrees, amazing. Now I study English-Hungarian medical translation and interpreting. What I really don't know whether it is better to promote myself as a psychology and neuroscience translator or this would be too special and I would not have enough work. Otherwise, I'm interested in medical texts as well, but probably clients will prefer to those translators who are doctors. What would be your advice? To what extent is it worth to specialize, especially if my native language is a relatively small language like Hungarian? Thank you very much. Now, great question. And we had a, an extensive talk uh, together 
Uh, it's really important to not sell yourself short. Like you say, most clients will will uh, prefer uh, translators that are doctors, but you have to find them first, right? There are not many actual doctor translators. So don't think just because you're not a doctor, you're not allowed to do medical translation. That's not at all true. If you haven't seen my specialized video on medical translation, you can click here. I don't think anyone was an actual doctor on there, so you don't really need to be. But as you correctly point out, medical is such a broad term. And what I would do, what then my advice was, especially if you were working in a small language like Hungarian, I would market myself as a medical translator with a special focus on psychology, on neuroscience, right? So if someone really looks for someone very specialized in this field, you are the number one, of course, but the generalized medical text that anyone, any medical experienced professional can do, you can also do if you market yourself that way. So don't get obsessed with really like pinpointing exactly what you want to call yourself. It's perfectly fine to call yourself a medical translator with a specialization in, a, in psychology. Uh, that's great in my opinion. So that's what I would do if I were you. And amazing, your your background, your your degrees, your also your outlook, your mindset. Uh, because now I've I've met with you and talked with you. It was it was great to meet you, and uh, you're definitely on the right track. And you will you will do very well in this industry, I think. All right. Next question is very uh, cat tool specific from Linda Barrientos. Hello, thank you so much for your videos. I used Stratos before a couple of years ago, but wanted to refresh my memory because I applied for a job where I needed, and your video helped a lot. I have a question. How fast do you consider tools help us translate? It? Translate. At this job, they want me to translate three PPPs, PowerPoint presentations, at a day with more than 75 slides each. They want at least 15 dossiers a week. These PPPs have some images and some pages are quotes, but some are full of very small texts. I'm nervous. I feel like this too much a day. Uh, also, they pay. the pay is not necessarily great, so I want to consider if it will end up being too much trouble. It helps that I've translated professionally for a while and this is what I do for a living, but not using tools lately. So I'm not familiar with how fast using them can be. Now, Linda, I want to make sure. Okay, okay there are a couple of things I want to say. If something feels too much to you and you don't feel comfortable doing it, then don't do it because cat tools will not help you alleviate that pain, right? That's number one. Uh, don't expect them to be a magic tool that make work go away. That's not how it works. Uh, you don't really use cat tools to be faster. You do, that's one point, but it's not the main uh, approach, right? It's not the main goal of the tool. Um, Three PPPs a day with more than 75 slides each is insane. That is, no matter, how, even if there is not much on the slides, that is so extremely much work. And uh, even if the pay is not great, so they're obviously, sorry, just got an email, and the pay is not great, so they obviously want to exploit you. Uh, that's insane, that will drive you crazy, that will give you anxiety, will give you stress, and could eventually lead to you ending uh, this, this profession prematurely. Um, definitely don't take it. I, I wrote her that's that's way too much. Uh, be careful with that, especially when you already know that something is too much. I, I recently just got a, I accepted a, a very, very large job that pays very, very well. So that's, that's of course, if they paid very well, that, that would be another story, right? So, um, and suddenly uh, after I had started, I realized that it's extremely difficult to translate and it would be way too much. So, so I reached out to the client and we managed to split it up a little bit more and uh, just always put your mental health first. That's the most important and definitely don't take this job. It's way too big. Uh, in terms of how much faster CAT tools help us translate, they do improve uh, productivity because there are some things that will just automatically be populated, right? And you don't need to translate anything twice. And uh, if the client gives you a nice, uh, a nice uh, memory and a nice glossary, there are things that you can just take from there. So you have to do much less research, but faster than on average, maybe 10, 15%, you will not be. So don't take this as a guidance to make your job easier. So it's time to look at, at uh, Instagram. So let's see the questions that you guys ask that are already following. Yeah, I thought so. That these are quite general, right? Because it's just a prompt and people just type anything to get started. So how to get the ball rolling? I find it difficult to find jobs. Yes, it's definitely difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. Otherwise, anything will anyone would do it. Um, the best 
uh, I put all my advice to get the ball rolling into this video, how to find translation shops. So make sure to watch it. If you follow my Instagram, you have probably seen this video because it's one of my biggest, but th there is so much that I could repeat in every video again, but there's no point just go watch this. And that's all my tips to get the ball rolling. And then it just takes tenacity, a lot of uh, endurance, a lot of creativity as well. And uh, you get, you need to meet the right people. So just talk to anyone, just build your network, reach out today to five people. Uh, if they are in your city, ask them for a coffee, go talk to them. Network is the most important. So start building it right now. Hi Adrian, what are things that help you stay organized as a freelancer? Uh, for me, it's to-do lists. To be honest, this year I'm not as organized as I want to be. Somehow my, my mindset is completely messed up and I'm not sure what it is, but I can't get on top of things. I like to be on top of things, you know, always finishing the day with like my things accomplished. But uh, this year, for example, for, for some reason, maybe it's everything is a bit too much. What's going on in the world? That's probably most people feel that way. Um, but to-do lists, definitely at the beginning of every day, I write up what I want to do. And when I have a big job, is it still here? No, it's not here anymore. But when I have a big job, I actually write down the hours of the day and I write down a progress report. So at 10 a.m. I want to be there. At 11 p.m. At 11 a.m. I want to be there. Especially if I use a cut tool, you can always see the percentage in the bottom, right? And uh, yesterday I had to finish a big job in a cut tool. So I just wrote down every hour which percentage I want to have completed. So at 10, I had completed 30%, at 11.40, at 12.50, etc. So uh, just lists. Lists are my number one tool to help me keep organized. The best and worst part of being a freelancer. Nice. Uh, the best part is the freedom. You get to do whatever the heck you want to do. Uh, you wake up and you do exactly what you want to do. And that's, uh, that's my definition of happiness. That's my purpose of life, to just exactly have my life under my control i want to do what i want to do and that i don't mean that in an egoistic way i mean i still do a lot for other people but i want to have the control of my life i don't want to be told what to do every day um, and that's the best part for me the worst part is probably mm, that's hard to say uh, it's either between having no colleagues you can have colleagues you just have to really make an effort to go out there and meet people uh, or the instability that some people have practical things when and in which language do you send invoices do you hire native proofreaders oh no 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 that's that's an overkill for invoices i write all my invoices in english doesn't matter what clients uh, what they speak i just write them all in english i don't I mean, this is, uh, you need to see the amount, you need to see my account and that's it, right? I, I don't do like translations of my invoices, that would be too much work. Uh, I do them at the end of every month, but not but technically at the beginning of every, mo every month for the previous month. So now it's the 3rd of August, yesterday was the 2nd and yesterday I did the invoices for July. And oh, one funny one, the last one, how do you feel when family members, friends ask you to translate something for free for them? That's a funny one. I hear people complain about this a lot and uh, like they say, oh, just can you just do this quickly for me? Uh, for me, that's no problem. I do it all the time, right? My, especially my dad asks me quite often to do something and I like doing it because it helps him. It, it gives me practice and I can do something for my family member. In terms of friends, uh, it has happened previously, but mostly well, very close friends, I do it, of course, acquaintances or not so close friends, I just offer them a, a better price. And I do work for friends, paid work as well, and they're usually very happy. Uh, if it's a really big job, no one expects you to do it for free, I think, or at least it's never happened to me. Yeah, but there has been one occasion when an acquaintance that maybe thought were very good friends or, but yeah, I mean, they, he was a friend, but not a very good friend. And he asked me to proofread uh, something like a thesis. And I said, I can do it, but that's a lot of work. Like that's many, many hours of work. So it would cost this and this much. I, I quoted him a, a, a cheaper price than usual. I think, I don't know if he got upset, but he got a bit weirded out that I would charge him for that. But I told him, you look like, uh, that's that's over 10 hours of work and uh, I'm busy so I can't do that for free and I think he understood in the end so just be very clear what you want what you have time for uh, and if you want to do it do it otherwise don't do it there you go these have been the questions for the first Q&A of the season I'm very excited to launch the season three of the freelance verse I'm curious where this will be going uh, 
I mean, when I look at the last year, how, how far it's, it's come, I can, I can only imagine where it's going in the next year. Thanks for all the nice messages over the summer. I've gotten a lot of messages. Uh, we miss your videos. I am waiting for you to come back. So here I am. This is the launch of season three. And I see you next week with a video about customer retention. Very interesting. See you then. Bye bye.